are now recording, Nolan. So thank you everyone for being here. This is uh, wonderful. This is our second Blab. And uh, the first one, of course, was ours back in December. And it was our trial run with it. And it went so well. We got some great feedback and great comments on Blab for Blabbing for Travel Agents. Plus, we had a lot of fun. So here today, we're here to talk about branding for travel agents and how to leverage your own brand and build your business. Plus, the added value here is that you can start using, as a travel pro, start using Blab as a marketing tool for yourselves. Because think about how cool this would be if you wanted to host a group meeting or talk about a destination. You could schedule a Blab and use this as a platform for your existing clients and potential new clients. Plus, since Blab is public, you'll have a chance to meet with other people who you might not have had a chance to meet with or connect with in any other platform. So I think we'll just start by introducing each of ourselves and then going into the program as uh, Nolan and I had laid it out. So I'm Catherine Heek. Thank you again for being here. And as a travel pro, I started in the travel business back in my hometown of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, as a travel agent. And then after graduating from the University of New Orleans, I went on to work on the supplier side, where I managed sales teams across North America. And uh, then my career extended through the um, airline, car rental, and hotel sectors. So I've worked both inbound and outbound, both in Canada and the US. And now I speak and train just in our industry and just on social marketing. So I'd like to turn it over to Nolan now. Hey, thanks, Catherine. Uh, well, I hope that uh, we'll have a few more people joining in. Pl uh, again, apologies that something went a little wonky with the, the link, but that's why we call this a beta and not a ready to go <laughs> kind of system, I suppose. <laughs> but the, one of the wonderful things is because it is public, you know, people could just happen by and there we go. We get, you get some exposure and that's one of the reasons we wanted you guys to see it. Anyway, uh, but to your point, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Nolan Burris. I'm president of Future Proof Travel Solutions based in Vancouver, Canada. But I started my travel career way down south in Tulsa, Oklahoma about good grief, 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow, it goes by in a flash. Uh, but anyway, today, my company, uh, we're all about training people in the travel industry to become better, smarter, faster, make more money, have more fun. Uh, it's all about becoming future proof. Hey, that's why we named the company that. But today, we're going to be talking about branding and rebranding. And it's a big subject. You are branding whether you realize it or not. Even if you've not put the least bit of effort into creating a brand, you have one. Because with every ad, with every Facebook post, with every phone call you answer, with every consultation you have, with every reservation you make, you are branding. Branding is not your logo and it ain't your business card. It is how your customers and prospects perceive you. They're actually in charge of the brand, but it's all based on their experiences in using you. And sometimes people, uh, travel agencies need to rebrand to come up with a different image out there that might than one that might already be out there. And so that's what this session is really all about. And Catherine and I put together about five points for you to help you in either branding to get the right kind of image out there in the public, to become known for something, or to rebrand if you're hoping to kind of change that image that might be out there in the general public. Is it Again, it's happening whether you're doing it on purpose or not. Think about the brands that you already know, that you recognize. Mercedes, Apple, Android, Samsung, Ford. I could keep going, but we all have an immediate opinion or feeling as to what we think those brands are, we don't necessarily share that same opinion with other people, which is the perfect example of what I mean when I say your customers are kind of in charge of your brand, but it's all based on their experiences and interpretation of the image you're trying to get out there. So 
I'm going to start with my very first point on branding and rebranding to kind of get the ball rolling. And then Catherine is going to come along with this concept and kind of maybe help you apply it a little more in the world of online and social media and that kind of stuff. So here's my first point, and that is to balance your marketing. In marketing, there are basically two kinds. Most people think of this as advertising, but remember, advertising is just one slice of the marketing pie. It's not the only kind of marketing there is, but there are basically two forms of marketing or advertising. One is called image. The other is called response. In the typical travel agency, actually in a whole lot of businesses, the focus tends to be on response advertising. And what that means is the kind of marketing or ad that will make the phone ring or make somebody come in and buy something. And it seems like that's where you should put the most of your effort. But curiously, the, the gurus who study marketing and the results of it and so forth have found that in fact, image marketing has a significantly higher impact and a much longer lasting uh, top of mind awareness, where if people think travel, they think you. With response advertising, that impression only lasts as long as the ad does. As soon as the promo's over, you're forgotten. But with image advertising, they become more aware of who you are and what you're all about. And so my first tip is to shift your marketing a little more toward the image side of it, where you're not just marketing cruises and tours and beaches and resorts and stuff. You're talking about you and the value that you bring to the table, separate and beyond the trip itself. So Catherine, I think you have some ideas as to how they might be able to make that a little more real. I do, and those are just fabulous points because it's not just about the resort or about the destination that they're selling, but they're also selling themselves. So a couple of ways that you can do that is uh, in your social ads and your social posts, make sure that you're promoting and uh, talking about yourself and that your image is consistent across all of your social marketing platforms and that your voice is the same from uh, post to post. So for example, if you're posting in the luxury market, you want to have a voice that speaks to luxury. If you're posting in the family market, it might be a very different voice that you're using as you're posting. So in thinking about your image online, that also ties into the quality of the photos that you post from your latest fan trip or your latest light inspection. It goes down to the voice that you use in your blog posts. It has an impact on any video that you create. What's the brand and what's your image and what's your voice and style? in every single thing that you post. Um, and then advertising also plays into this because Nolan, you were talking a bit about advertising versus marketing. So advertising socially is again, a great way to boost your visibility and get some more reach, not only from your existing posts to people that you already have a connection with, but to your other potential fans that are out there in the world of social marketing waiting for you. And I know advertising is a huge topic, but it's something that you might want to consider because for a while it was okay to just put out posts, but now you really need to get into that pay to play marketplace. And you know, it's, it's not as expensive as some people think. Yeah, the, the, you can get a tremendous result with a very little money put into boosting and advertising on Facebook, for example, is surprisingly affordable, especially compared to the results that you can get. It's not like the old days where it cost a, a fortune to be able to advertise on television or the radio. My goodness, you can get amazing results for 50 bucks sometimes on Facebook. It is amazing. Um, even $10 or $2 a day will get you some start. And then I found that once you start advertising on Facebook, um, you seem to get a little more reach on your organic posts mm. as well. So maybe it's a little bit of extra juice that Facebook gives you as a thank you for advertising. But the more frequently you post and the more frequently you advertise some of those posts, you're going to start seeing that snowball effect yes. coming through. 
And I know a lot of people start off by using boost post, you know, that little blue button down yeah. in the right hand corner of your, your boost, of your post. But I find that if you use Power Editor, you get way more options for um, targeting audiences, for targeting very specific audiences. And it gives you a chance, again, to reach more people for a very small amount of money and to highly target who you're reaching. So for example, if you were going to be selling cruise and you wanted to reach out to people who, like you're selling a European cruise, say, you could target your ad or your post about this European cruise to people who love Italian food, who like to drink red wine, yes. who have a trip coming up in the next month. So the targeting options are huge. Well, it, it's a, a fascinating, you know, you brought, you brought up such a good point and it's a fascinating topic. Uh, we could talk for an hour just about that. Target, target, target. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I think made in marketing of any form is when you try to send everything to everyone and just hope that somebody notices. But today, all of our inboxes are overflowing with stuff from a thousand different sources. We tend to just shut it off. And so you can you can actually damage your brand by sending everything to everyone and hoping somebody notices. It's much better to be focused on what it is that you're trying to get out there. And that um, kind of leads me to my next point. Are we ready for another? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> Here's my next tip in uh, branding and rebranding. And that is to sell you not just the product, not just the destination and not just the suppliers. Inst think about it. On the typical Facebook page, in the typical newspaper where you see travel ads, there will be dozens and dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of people promoting exactly the same beach, exactly the same resort, exactly the same cruise, exactly the same tour. And it just becomes noise after a while. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that sometimes. You have to promote product. You have to promote suppliers and you have to promote destinations. But here's my point. What about you? I could get the same cruise, the same tour, the same fill in the blank beach from a zillion different places. Where within that marketing are you giving me a reason to get it from you? This is something you should ask with every bit of marketing you do, whether it's on Facebook, a printed flyer, um, a broadcast email, any of those things. Ask yourself the question, what have I done to give people a reason to get it from me instead of just saying, wow, that looks like a great trip. Let me go see if I can find it on Expedia, <laughs> right? Why should they get it from you? That should be integrated into every marketing that you do. Absolutely, because people buy from people they know and people they like. Anybody can go to the internet and buy something, but the real relationship comes from the knowing you, trusting you, you become their trusted advisor, mm -hmm. and then they're more likely to come back to you and develop some loyalty and send their, their friends and family that way as well. So a couple things they can do socially to build themselves as a brand um, are to use your photo albums strategically. Mm, photo albums, yeah. yeah. Photo albums on Facebook can be such a strong marketing tool. So think about if you were to create a new photo album for each destination and each product that you sell. So for example, maybe you're a specialist in cruising. So then you might want to start a photo album for each of your top suppliers cruise lines and then put a copy of your certification from that cruise line into that photo album. Mm. Just build that credibility a little bit more, shows people that you've been on that cruise and shows people that you understand that marketplace. So those photo, that photo album tip can be carried over into Pinterest as well. So you might start a Pinterest board for each of your top suppliers, for each of your niche markets, for each of your specialties, and upload photos that go along with that, as well as the certification and any awards that you've won in that realm. And then you take that one step further, and you can do the same thing with um, 
photos on Twitter. So anytime you put out a tweet, make sure there's a photo there with it. And then if you take that even one step further, you can string a couple of those photos or a series of those photos together and create a little video. So now you have a short 20 or 30 second video of each of your top destinations. And you throw in a picture of yourself at that destination or yourself uh, talking to the ship's uh, concierge or the hotel director. And then that becomes a credibility building tool for you as well. So then you take those little videos and you post them on all of your social sites. You include them into uh, your video posts on Facebook. And you might have had a little bit of work in creating all of that. But you've got a great library now of really good content that you can showcase and send along to your clients when they're interested in booking a specific guest. That's a really good really good point and you know the whole thing with albums uh photo albums it think about what people look at the most when they uh, poke around on facebook and what pinterest is all about and even instagram it's all about those photos um seeing visual imagery you know it, uh, people share images all the time on facebook a picture of a cute cat a picture of a beautiful beach a picture of a cool resort they share that kind of stuff all the time. But you know what? I have never seen shared, Catherine, ever. No one has ever shared one of these things with me. You want to know what it is? Mm, what? An ad. No one has ever <laughs> shared an ad with their network on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest. They're sharing cool stuff. Cool, interesting, engaging, pretty, fun-looking stuff like photos. That's the kind of stuff that gets spread around all over the place. Not another ad for yet another $100 shipboard credit. <laughs> well, exactly. And, and that has its place in, in a news feed. But what's going to capture somebody's attention more is an aspirational photo. You know, yes. that beautiful beach that you talked about, Nolan. That's the kind of thing that gets them thinking, oh, yeah, I really need a vacation. And then they're more open to seeing that ad or that post that comes out talking about uh, the value or what you're going to see on that cruise. Yes. And then they're willing to make that booking. Yeah, very good. Very good point. Well, I, I've seen lots of, speaking of good points, lots of interesting uh, comments and stuff scrolling by. And thank you to everyone who is who is putting some comments in. Um, I do have another point if you think we're ready to move on to the next. Let's okay, go and it. this one is also in the same vein of marketing, and that it's a very simple strategy for marketing, and that is match the message to the market. Now, let me be more specific than that. Um, every one of these social media platforms out there, like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, they all kind of have a primary audience. And I know you know this better than anybody, Catherine, but my goodness, about uh, five years ago, it was all teenagers and stuff all over Facebook. Well, what happened? Mom got on it. The kids got off of it. <laughs> <laughs> so Facebook aged. The The audience on Facebook is, is mostly women over 55. And Pinterest, well, I think the latest stat I saw was what? It's like 80% women on there. And so right away, I know that I need to put the right kind of thing in the right kind of channel. So for example, Twitter is a lot younger, a significantly younger demographic, probably not the best place to try to talk about Alaska cruises, you know? So Matt, you'd just be wasting your time. So match the message to the market and the channel. It's more of that targeting thing that we talked about. And that's huge, Nolan. That's a really great tip because some people make the mistake of putting the wrong message in the wrong platform or spreading that message out across every single platform. So you see Instagram show up on Facebook and you see tweets show up on Facebook. And I would love to see individual posts suited for each marketplace. Uh, that's great. So that was a about matching the market and the audience. And I know a lot of people don't always 
know where their audience hangs out in the world of social media. Nola and I, we've talked about this before. Um, understanding who your audience is and where they hang out is going to help you spend your time and your talent in the right places. So we, if you've ever thought about surveying your clients to find out where they are in the world of social media, now is a good time to think about that. You can easily send out a Survey Monkey survey mm. and just ask clients three quick tips. You know, um, when's the last time you posted something in Facebook or uh, how long do you spend each week on Instagram? So then you have an idea of what action they're taking on those sites and how they're using those sites. Very, very good. The other points. thing, Nolan, that, yeah, thank you. The other thing you mentioned, Nolan, was um, matching the um, market to the platform that you're using. And I know a lot of people try to do that, but they post some great images, but they're not sized the right oh, way. It drives me crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't that? I would love to see more of these great pictures that Pete Travel and Throws have taken in a destination or on a, a ship site inspection. But when they're a little tiny or they're thumbnail videos, it kind of misses the mark. Um, so some sizing things can be challenging because it seems that every platform has a different size for everything. Yes. So some great um, resources out there for checking those sizes. If you go to my Pinterest page, there's a whole thing, a whole board on cheat sheets. So it gives you all the up-to-date sizing. And that's really important. Again, it speaks to your credibility as a travel pro, and it also speaks to how much time and talent you are putting into your own marketing efforts. Well, and you know, uh, uh, Catherine, I think you've, you've hit um, another subject that we could almost talk about for an hour. <laughs> and, and that is, <laughs> you know, whichever channel you decide to focus your efforts on, get good at that channel. You don't necessarily have to do them all, but whichever ones you're doing, Make sure you do it right. Make sure you know what's required for that particular channel. And, you know, I, I, this is going to sound so flippant, and I don't mean it that way, but um, how do you find out what's the proper size for a, a, a photo on Facebook? Well, one, you could look at Catherine's Pinterest, but hello, Google, and 13 seconds of asking a question. <laughs> Google, what's the right size for a post on, on Facebook? Trust me, you'll get not just one answer, you'll get about 13 million versions of it, but it'll be there, it'll be there. Um, but anyway, coming back to, to that subject, uh, my buddy Dean asked a question about what about Instagram? And, and I would say, it's, uh, I, th I think he's asking about demographics and such. And uh, Instagram do is definitely more of a younger demographic. But here's a good way of thinking about it. Now, I'm an old guy. You know I'm an old guy, right, Catherine? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're not. You're only as old as you think you are, Nolan. <laughs> well, according to my birth certificate, I'm 57. So that's fairly oh. old. <laughs> but here's... No, we don't look at birth certificates. <laughs> well, some of us like to play with a fancy new techno gizmo. That's one of my favorite things. But um, to be honest... The newer the thing, the more likely it's going to have a younger demographic. Not always, but like even Blab that we're on here. Uh, I've already, just as we've been talking, I've had about three emails from people saying, I don't know how to hear you. Now, I, I know that my niece would have gotten on here and she would have known where to click and what to do. And she, if she couldn't hear me, she wouldn't have asked. She would have just gone to Google and say, how do I hear people on Blab? Like it's a little bit, there's a little bit of an age thing associated with it, but not entirely. But as a rule of thumb, the newer it is, the more likely it is that it'll be a, a younger demographic. Once it's been around for a while and the kids have explained it to mom and grandma, then they're on it too. <laughs> And that's why Facebook, in uh, in some respects, has aged. It's the most mature of all the social media things out there. Well, the ones that still last and didn't go out of business. So, <laughs> so mom and grandma figured it out. My mom lives on Facebook. She's in her 80s and she's on it all the time. And thank you uh, to the person who said, Nolan, you don't look a day over 40. Good lighting. That's, that's a really important thing with all of this. 
<laughs> and a soft focus camera. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. It's the secret of life, my no, friend. You don't want those high definition cameras, folks. Totally ruins it. You need one that's got low definition, hides the wrinkles in the eye bags. <laughs> what up this for? <laughs> well, we do have uh, more points, and I want to make sure that we uh, that we don't skip them. So why don't I move on to the next one, Catherine? Are we ready? Yes. You know, um, Nolan, let's just back up because you oh, brought sure. up a really good point about the age factor and um, different social platforms. Somebody also asked a question about Periscope. Oh, yes, I see that. Good question. Yeah. And that's one of those newer platforms. Um, and surprisingly, it's not as young of a demographic as something like Snapchat is, which is a lot of teenagers. Periscope has some great uses for our industry in particular and for businesses in general. Because Periscope is a live streaming video platform, meaning that if you were on a fam trip or you're doing a ship site inspection, you could have Periscope loaded up on your phone and you could be videotaping everything that you're seeing. People would follow along with you on Periscope and write in comments and thoughts and ideas and questions. So, for example, if you're doing a ship site inspection and somebody has a question about, well, what does the handicap accessible cabin mm -hmm. look like? You could ask the person who's doing the site inspection for you and have them take you right over and show you what that handicap accessible yeah. cabin looks like. So you'd have a great chance to really engage people on a live basis and show them what it is that they want to see. Well, you know, so fact, thanks for bringing. Yeah, that it's up. in fact, um, you could think of Periscope kind of like the mobile version of what we're doing right now. It's live video casting. Uh, not two people like we're doing now, but you do have video from your phone or your mobile device, and people can comment and. I've seen some travel agents do amazing things with Periscope. But again, I would say it tends to be a somewhat younger audience, uh, not exclusively, but it does tend to be people who are a little more tech savvy and a little more likely to have the latest app and gizmo on their phone. So, um, yeah. Well, let's... let's Good point. Let, but but yeah, let's no, think no, about no. that a little further. That millennial marketplace is huge yes. in the travel industry. And, and they are... You're right, and, and that. But I go back to my other my point about matching the message to the market. The millennials are not so likely to take an Alaska cruise with people like me. They're going to be more likely to, to do the you know the the more adventure style cruises. Um, and so again, matching the message to the market, Periscope is fantastic. But I'd remember who the market is for whatever I might be doing with it. The same thing here with Blab, for example. Um, a lot of people are probably frustrated that the link got screwed up, but uh, there's probably a lot of folks in their 20s and 30s that said, yeah, yeah, whatever. And they found it in the on-air section and they're here because we have 40 people who still somehow found us, even though the link changed. Good. <laughs> But thank you for everyone for being so tenacious and finding us. We appreciate that. Yes, we do. We do. All right. Our next point Um this one might be a little bit of a, a sore spot with some folks. <laughs> oh, not. And that is to avoid negative or defensive marketing, to always focus on the positive. Um, I know a lot of people follow my business page on Facebook where we post these fun images on the value of using a travel consultant and they get shared all over the place. And that's cool. I love that. Uh, but we're very careful when we craft those to make sure. And, and by the way, if you don't know about them, go take a look. They're there for you to share. That's the whole point. Um, but anyway, when we craft those, we have we poke a little bit of fun sometimes at the Internet. But it's it, and it's OK to poke fun. But what it's not OK to do is to say things like the Internet is going to rip you off. You should never be on it. That's not good. Negative marketing is not a good thing. It impacts your brand, your image in a negative way. Mm -hmm. So a much better way to approach it is to focus on the positive side of, so what do you have to offer that a website or an app or whatever can't? Focus on the positive, not the negative. Have fun 
don't insult people by saying they made a mistake to use the internet. I see that a lot on Facebook where a, a well-intending travel agent will comment where someone had a horrible experience because of something they bought online and their comment will be something like, well, that's what you get for booking on the internet. Okay, that doesn't win you any fans. A better way to comment on it is to say, hey, some people have had some great experiences, but there's nothing that online, but there's nothing that can beat having a human who does this all day, every day, knows the ins, the outs, the tricks and the traps. I'm here to protect you. Now that will get you the right kind of fans. And that's a great point, Nolan, because sometimes we fall into the trap of going to that negative route. but. Um, I, I really like that tip. That's fabulous. And I think it applies to whether you're on social or whether you're sending an email to somebody or even a phone conversation, wouldn't you think? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Be, uh, yeah. Considering the stats that nearly 97, and I know it sounds like a made up number, but in this case, it happens to be the real one. Uh, nearly 97% of people who travel today say that the internet is in the mix somewhere. Either they, they researched it there, they bought it there, they did both there, they're adding to it, supplementing their trip there. And so you have to be very careful if that many people, it is close to 100% as you're gonna get with the margin of error. So we have to be extremely careful not to say horrible negative things about what all of your customers are doing. <laughs> That doesn't make them love you. Instead, we have to show them how you don't do what it does. You do something better than it does. You are superior to it. And we know it's true. You know. Here, I'm going to give you a good line. And you all are welcome to steal this one. And anyone who's heard me before has heard me say it. because, And I stole it myself from a travel agent I heard. But it's a good line that you can use in marketing or just in conversations. When somebody says, yes, but I can find an amazing deal on the Internet. I, can, I found it $20 less a night, whatever it might be. The comeback is, is always the same. No matter what price you found, no matter who gave you a price, there is always a cheaper price somewhere. Always. Guarantee there's a cheaper price somewhere. But... There is also always a reason, and sometimes it's a good reason, and sometimes it's a really nasty surprise. After all, rooms that overlook the dumpsters are always cheaper than the ones that look over the ocean. The cabin on the cruise ship that's right underneath the noisy dance floor upstairs is always cheaper than the one that is actually quiet where you can get some sleep. And so I tell people to tell your clients this. If there's a legitimate deal, I can get it for you, but if it's a ripoff, I'm here to protect you from it. I'm going to say that one again. <laughs> if there's a legitimate deal, I can get it for you. But if, it, if it's a ripoff, I'm here to protect you from it. Now, that's the kind of positive spin marketing that is the truth, and it must always be the truth. But it, it, it cuts through the clutter of just always trying to be cheapest price, cheapest price, cheapest price. There's always a cheaper price. So instead of just trying to market on that market on the fact that you're you're smarter you know the difference you know the deals from the ripoffs and you're here to protect them great advice i hope people have written that down because i love that quote nolan that's that's just great and it's it's something easy to say it's something easy to remember and it goes a long way both when you're talking to somebody on the phone or email or even posting something on Facebook because you always want to focus on the positive, whether uh, your traditional marketing or any kind of social marketing. So some things that work really well in that realm socially are some of those aspirational posts where you're um, helping people understand what it might be like to travel to a more exotic location or you're posting pictures of something more adventurous or something that's um, sort of outside the, the realm of most people's travel options, mm -hmm. and you're giving them something aspirational to uh, think about. Or it might be inspirational. You know, maybe it's a quote about getting out and traveling the world, and that makes them think, oh, yeah, I really need to start planning my vacation. So those kinds of positive um, stimulus really help people think about what they're going to be doing for their vacation. Um, 
And then also that kind of aspirational or inspirational post needs to be matched to your niche market mm -hmm. or your specialty. So if you specialize in adventure travel, great on you for posting those adventure travel posts. But if you're focusing on something that's not adventure travel, you might not want to be posting something that's totally hardcore adventure travel. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're posting, uh, if your niche market is luxury, then you're going to want to think about posting luxury properties and luxury destinations, luxury cruise ships. That's something that's a hundred dollars off on yes. something. So hearing that, um, messaging with your branding and with your niche market is going to help you again, provide that great consistent brand, no matter what you're doing. Yes. So back to you, Nolan. Hey, oh, sorry. I'm typing and talking and listening because the, qu oh, the questions are coming in on, on Blab. They're coming in in email. We've, I've been, so I know you're doing the same thing when I'm talking. You're probably replying to questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just kind of looking over and looking this way. At the side. I'm not a good multitasker. <laughs> Good thing I'm not chewing gum right now. I couldn't chew gum and do this at the same time either. All right. <laughs> I have one more point that uh, relates to all of this branding and rebranding. And and and, and at, at some point in time, you might think these things we talked about are not, are not specific to branding, but they actually are. I, I want to back up a little bit before I hit this last point. Branding is not just the logo. It's not just the advertising you do. It's not just your slogans. It is that, but branding is how do people perceive you? What do they think you are? What do they think you're all about? And all these things we're talking about are part and parcel of conveying that message as to what you really are, what you're really all about. And I'm going to be a little dramatic for a moment, but if your marketing is primarily about putting out deal after deal after deal after deal and discount after discount after discount, you are creating a brand called We Are The Discount People. Now that can be okay. You can be successful in business as the discount people, but guess who comes to shop with you? Discount seekers. And that can be okay too, but don't get all cranky when you say my market is very price sensitive. Duh, you're attracting them. <laughs> but if instead you are branding yourself as someone who is there to protect people, and in my mind, that's one of the biggest benefits of all of using a travel consultant. You're there to keep people from wasting their money on the wrong trip. It's not a bargain. If they come home saying, gee, I wish I hadn't done that, right? So in my mind, this is your biggest advantage of all. But there's one more, and that is my last point. And that is to put the spotlight in your marketing and your branding on something that they will never get on any website, any app at all. And that is your relationships that you have with your suppliers. I know every travel agent I know at one point or another, and sometimes 20 times a day, have had to pull a favor with a supplier because they have a good relationship with them, where they have a customer that got in a jam, or they had to cancel something, upgrade something, change something. Um, they needed some help because something got full, canceled. You, name, you know what I'm talking about here. They will never get that on a website. Only you can offer that. And the only reason you can offer it is because you have real relationships with real people, the real suppliers. And so, you know, one thing you can say is, you know, you can find, I would get proactive about this. Don't just leave it for them to figure out, tell them about it. So when you're having a conversation with a client and uh, they're going to look on the web after they talk to you anyway. So take control of it and say something like this. I know you are probably going to find this same cruise on or tour or whatever it might be on dozens of websites. But I have a very close relationship with that supplier. And if anything goes wrong, I am far more likely to be able to help you than if you were doing it all by yourself. That is one of those silver bullet things that they'll never get online or on an app. You need to point that out to them because why would they know otherwise? 
Well, and that's a really good point, Nolan, because in our industry, it's all about relationships. You and I have been in this industry for a long mm. time, and it's all about the contacts that we have and the people that we meet at trade shows, those folks that we see on webinars. Those are all great contacts mm. for us. And I know I used to be a BDM, and I would love it when someone would phone me up and have a question for me or a challenge that was thrown out. So we know that using those contacts and making the most of them and saying thank you at the end is really important. Yeah. So that was a great point, Nolan. And if we want to look at that from a, a social strategy, how about the next time you're on a fam trip or you're at a trade show, get some pictures of yourself with your BDMs. It again reinforces that relationship, reinforces, shows people that you are in the know and you know these people personally. Or you could even start a blab. <laughs> Pick out one of your favorite BDMs and have a blab on their destination or whatever it is that they represent. And focus on, like we're doing here today, one of us is the BDM, the other person is the travel pro, and you're having a conversation about that product. Think about how that would position a travel pro in the world of of professionalism and credibility. It'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? You know, that, that, that's a really good idea. And I, I, I want to point something out to everybody who, who uh, is on our Blab now, because we have about 50 of you that are part of the, the program right now. And keep in mind that a whole lot of people went to the wrong link because something went a little screwy with the system. But you don't even have to have a link to do Blab. The only reason we had you register is so that we had an email address to send you the recording after the fact, because we knew not everybody was going to be able to make it. But you don't have to do what we did. You don't have to have a link. You can start a Blab session in the next, as soon as we're done, you can start a Blab and people around the big wide world would see it. You give it a, a fancy title like Joanne talking about how to get the perfect cruise or Bob and Bill discuss having uh, getting the biggest bang for the buck in Jamaica. It can be something like that. And you can do it on the spur of the moment. You don't have to do the send out registrations thing like we did. Again, that was just to make sure you guys got a copy of the recording when we're done. But it's such, there's so many tools like this out there that are easy. You don't have to make a big production out of it. Catherine's just sitting in her office. I'm just sitting in mine. I didn't even put a dress shirt on today. <laughs> Put my necklace on. <laughs> you, look, you look fantastic. I look like a slob, but it's okay. This is about real people talking to real people about real people stuff. And I think that's possibly the best branding that you could get in the travel business. I agree. And I think anytime we can reach out to people visually, mm. that's where we're going to be really powerful. Yeah. Because it goes back to, like we talked about earlier, Nolan, people knowing and liking people that they do business with. And that is what things like this open up uh, the opportunity for. So again, putting that spotlight on your uh, supplier relationships can be done in a platform like Lab. It could be done with Periscope. It could be simply done with taking a picture of yourself with your favorite medium at a trade show. Or what you could do is take a picture of yourself with your favorite BDM, put it together with a couple other photos from that BDM's destination or product, whatever it is they're selling, string them together into a little video yeah. and use Flipgram or iMovie or Movie Maker to create just a short little 20 or 30 second video that you can post on your social sites or embed onto your website or post into your blog or wherever you want to post it. But again, it's a way to solidify that relationship with your supplier and to add some uh, interest and credibility and exposure, visibility for your brand as well. You know, that uh, makes me think of something I saw a travel agent do recently. Um, and, and by the way, I see someone is wanting uh, to, to call in, travel with Eva. We are going to be opening it up here in just a minute. Um, but in any case, uh, something a travel agent did that I thought was brilliant, and it's so simple. 
They were staying at one of their preferred suppliers resorts. They were shooting video on, I, I can't remember if it was an iPhone or an Android, but it doesn't matter. They both work the same way. So shooting live video, say like little three minute things, not giant long things, but just, uh, hey, here I am at the pool of the such and such resort. They're one of our preferred suppliers and here's why. Don't these people look happy? This could be you right from the phone in one finger tap. You can upload it to YouTube. And so they were on both platforms, Android and iOS, you can upload directly from the video you just shot to YouTube. You have to have a YouTube account for it to work, of course. But then you put, give it a title, put some tags in it, you're done. It took three minutes, but they posted about 50 of these while they were visiting a resort for one of their preferred suppliers. And all throughout it, they were saying, isn't this an amazing pool. What do you think of that bar? Here's the buffet where we're going to be having breakfast this morning. Now, this is why they're a preferred supplier of ours. We we think you would have a fabulous time here. And they were posting, posting, posting to YouTube. It costs you nothing to post to YouTube. You put a good title in it. You put some tags in it so that people will find it if they're searching for pool, bar, Jamaica, whatever. It's so easy to do today and free. Great point, Nolan. And it's easy. It's something everybody carries their phone in their yep. pocket these days. Yep. So great idea. And then if you take that one step further, you can take one of those videos or a couple of those videos and embed them into your blog post and write a post around the content of that video. So you get a little extra uh, juice from that video that you've created and you get a chance to express yourself in your blog. And then from that blog, of course, you can email that to people who are interested in that destination. And you get the SEO benefit of, of uh, uploading to your blog as True. well. So once you do something little, like create that video, there's so many different things that you can do with it. So your time is gonna be well spent. It's like repurposing it. You create one thing and now you can repurpose it all over the place. Yeah, that's right. Oh, and it looks like Eva has a question. So we, uh, Eva, are you ready to go live? Okay, Eva is coming into the video screen here. The there beauty of technology. Look at oh, you. Welcome, Eva. What a beautiful smiley face you have. Wow, you just look like you're beaming with light and love and enthusiasm. Thank you, thank you. And look at that nice cruise ship behind her. She is just all decked out with her branding. Look at that. <laughs> and that's my that's a question I have. You mentioned in the beginning about um, your customers can tell you what your branding is to make mm. sure that you're sending out the right messages. Do you have a sample survey or um, suggestions on a survey that um, we as the travel agents can survey our audience to kind of glean um, from what what they're seeing, I mean, we may think that we're putting out one message, but they may say something else. So that was my question. Is there a survey or something that you have or you can recommend? You know, it's a good question. I don't have a like a fixed thing, but I can tell you what others have done in the past that has worked pretty well. And it's really easy. Um, there's a, a couple of travel agencies and a couple of travel agencies I know that have done this. They use a tool like SurveyMonkey, which is free with a certain number, but there's a lot of free survey tools that you can use out there. And they just send a survey out, or it could even be a, an email thing, just asking a couple, uh, two or three questions. One, what do you, uh, what do you think we are all about? Now you can do this in, in two or three ways. You can either have things that people pick from or you can have an open-ended comment. What I like to do in surveys is both. Have two or three choices, and I know SurveyMonkey as well as most of the others allow you to do that, to have multiple, uh, like a pick from a drop-down list, but then also have comment for each question. So you have, your, your five choices might be, do you think we are A, A, 
discount broker for mass market cruises. Uh, B, a cons- <laughs> B, a consulting service to help people find the right cruise. C, um, a, gosh, I, I can't think of another, but you, you can't, you catch my drift. And the last one might be all of the above, but then that helps guide where people might be going in the survey. What It helps direct them a little bit, but then always have a comment, you know, any comments about the above where they can say whatever they want. Okay. I have always found that you get the best information from the comments, to be honest, but that you can't just add up on a spreadsheet. You have to sit down and read them. But yes. some, something as simple as, as asking, what do you think we are? And it can be just a couple of key questions. Uh, like, what do you think we're all about? What do you think our strong, uh, our, our best advantage to you is? Where do you think we're missing the boat? What could we be doing that we're not? One very important point is try not to ask more than about three to five questions. I agree. I, I don't yeah. mind doing a survey, but if there's too many questions, I'm like, oh, forget it. Oh, I'm out in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, my goodness, my my cell provider sent me a thing saying we just need two minutes of your time there were 50 questions (laughs) i just started making stuff up to get done with it (laughs) i don't think that would have given them much helpful information so uh anyway Catherine, i don't know if you have anything else but i don't have an an, uh, like a, a form or anything that's just what i've seen done that's worked pretty well okay yeah, no, and I, I like those ideas that you had because you give them a chance to have some open-ended questions, all of the above, none of the above choices as well. Um, you could even throw in a question about your social marketing and where they hang out in the world of social media. Yeah, yeah that's so that a good you, one. Yeah. Like, what do, you, what do you use where, the most? Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, when's the last time you posted a picture on your one of your social sites? Um, how, you know, because you want to determine how they're using the social site and which platform they're using. Because then if you are wanting to increase your social usage, you might add on something that you hear from a lot of your clients that they're using. Yeah. So it might give you a tip. And the other thing that I see some agents doing, which I think is really effective, is providing some sort of a downloadable thank you gift for them. You know, whether it's a packing list or a travel tip sheet or a destination guide, something as a little thank you for their time. Mm-hmm. Well, thank oh, you both for um, s- all you do to help the travel industry. And oh, and thank you. Such a gift. Hey, by the way, I love your name. I love Travel by Eva. That is or Travel with Eva. I think that is awesome because it's it's humans to humans. And boy, do we need more of that. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Nice to see your smile. Okay, great. See, isn't that fun when people call in? This is great. So, um, Nolan, did you have anything else to add? Because we are almost at the top of the hour. I haven't even been watching the clock there. It's a good thing somebody did. Well, I I think I think what I'll do is just do a quick recap of the five points. Um, and give people uh, how to get a hold of us. Although I think you probably already know, but just in case, my five points for you to recap were number one, balance your marketing, focus a little more on image and a little less on the response kind of marketing. It's all about the deals and the discounts. Number two, sell you, not just destinations and suppliers. So even if you are promoting a cruise or a tour or a special kind of thing, Make sure every single one of those includes some reason why they should get it from you and not just promoting the tour, the cruise, the destination and so forth. Number three, match the message to the market. So you really stop and think about it. Would this be something people on Twitter would be more interested in? Because it's going to be a little younger than the folks who are on Facebook. Uh, would it be more of interest to women? Then you might want to think about Pinterest, which is dominated by women. And by the way, just a quick aside, how do I know that stuff? G-O-O-G-L-E. That's how I know that stuff. <laughs> Hello, Twitter. What's the demographic of Pinterest? You'll find out in a heartbeat. It's simple. <laughs> All right. Uh, tip yeah. number four. 
of avoid negative or defensive marketing and focus more on the positive side. So don't just tell people the internet's going to rip them off. Tell them how you're going to protect them and take care of them and treat them like princes and princesses. And number five, put the spotlight on your supplier relationships because that's something they'll never get from a website or an app. The fact that you have got those people's phone numbers and you can call in favors when you need to. They'll never get that. That's one of your, one of your silver bullet things. So there's a quick recap. Here's how to get a hold of me. You can uh, just, uh, there's that Google thing again. You can just Google Nolan Burris and I'll probably pop up someplace, but you can also go to my website, Future Proof travel.com uh, or I don't know, just ask around. Somebody knows who I am, <laughs> but on future proof travel, there is a link to email us and I'd love to hear from you. Over to you, Catherine. Great. Thanks for that recap, Nolan. My recap fits in with your recap, surprisingly. <laughs> um, and point that Nolan talked about, think about how you can visually showcase your brand as well as yourself and present yourself as a real person, as an expert, and as somebody who's willing to help. So whether that's in the images you put out, whether it's in the video that you produce, whether it's in any kind of online social communication that you have with people, it's about your brand and making sure that it is as top notch as you are. So like Nolan, you can uh, find me online. My website is cmsspeaking.com and my company is Customized Management Solutions. So I look forward to uh, hearing your questions, your comments, any thoughts you have for another Blab next time because it seems like uh, in spite of some of the glitches we've had, we've had a great turnout and I for one have had a great time and I think all of you to Oh yeah, fun. this was fun, this was fun. And uh, everybody yeah. will get an email with a link to the recording. Takes us about a day or so to get that process, but you'll get that. Great, and thank you again for joining us. And uh, we'd love to hear from you and love to hear anything uh, that you'd like us to talk about the next time. So thanks again for joining thanks. us. Bye. Bye.